Hi, this is Father Jim Martin. I am editor-at-large at America Magazine. And this is the first in our series of Praying with the Bible, sponsored by America Magazine and the American Bible Society. We're going to teach you about different ways of praying with Scripture. And today we're going to look at something called Ignatian Contemplation. Now what does that mean? Well, it's based on the insights of Saint Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit order. Um, but it actually existed before he popularized it. Saint Francis of Assisi, for example, encouraged us to imagine ourselves in the Christmas crib, in the creche, to imagine ourselves uh, among the animals and with Mary and Joseph and the infant Jesus. In Ignatian Contemplation, Saint Ignatius asks us to use our imagination to place ourselves in the scripture scene, to actually compose the place and imagine the places that a lot of these Bible stories took place. So let's take a uh, Bible story. Let's take the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes. It's a Bible story that is included in all four of the Gospels. And you remember the story of Jesus feeding a crowd of 5,000 people with just a few loaves of bread and a few fishes. Ignatian contemplation would ask us to close our eyes and try to imagine ourselves in that scripture scene. So for example, what do you see? What do the crowds look like? How many people are around? What does the landscape look like? Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? What does the Sea of Galilee look like in the background? What do you hear? Can you imagine the people grumbling about uh, being hungry? What does Jesus' voice sound like to you? What do you feel? What kind of clothes are you wearing? Uh, are you cold out? Are you sitting on the ground? Is it cool? Is it warm? Uh, what do you taste? What does the uh, bread and the fish taste like to you? And finally, what do you smell? Can you smell the food? Can you smell the fresh air coming uh, from off the Sea of Galilee? So you compose the place, as St. Ignatius says, and you hope that God will enable you to experience this in a new way through your imagination. Now that you've composed the place, you kind of let the scene spin out, almost as if you were in a movie. But you're not looking at it from a distance, you're right there. You're a member of the crowd. Perhaps you're one of the disciples. And you notice what comes up. What does God want you to look at? Uh, maybe you notice something as small as uh, the part in the Gospel of John where he says a little boy brought the loaves and the fishes to the disciples for Jesus to distribute. And you say to yourself, wow, I never knew that someone could bring so little and God make it into so much. And you might think about how God multiplies things in our lives, the little offerings that we make, the little offerings of love or charity. Something like that could come up. In Ignatian contemplation, you really try to make the scripture seem your own. You place yourself there, and most of all, you trust that God will be able to work through your imagination. So I'd like to invite you to try this with your own favorite scripture scene. Use the insights of Ignatian contemplation and apply all of your five senses to help you imagine yourself in that scripture scene. Trust that God will work with you. Trust that God will help you notice things about the scene and about your own life because the Bible is the living word and God wants to encounter you in a very profound way in all that we read.